If you want to install the Java JDK, especially the Java 17 JDK, there's a lot of different options out there for you. You can download and install Azul, which I like a lot. There is Adoptium, there is the Red Hat JDK, there is the Amazon JDK. But you know, Oracle owns the Java trademark. So a lot of times when people talk about installing Java, they're interested in installing the Oracle version of Java. So how do you do it? Well, you mosey on over to the Oracle Java download site. I'm just gonna do a Windows install, and there's a few different options for doing installation. Perhaps the easiest is just to download the archive and then set up Java Home, pointing to where you extract the archive. But there's also an MSI installer, and that will step you through the process of doing the download. And I kind of like installing the Java 17 long-term support release using this MSI. See that it's uh, 151 megs in size, so we'll give it just four more seconds to download. I'll open up that downloads folder and right click on JDK 17 and click install. This is going to open up the MSI Windows installer for JDK 17. We will run this indeed. Let's see what it steps us through. We're going to install Java SE, the standard edition version 17. I'm excited already. It's going to ask you where it wants you to install. I dislike program files. I don't like that space in between the word program and files. Um, I also always like to just put the JDK somewhere that I can find it. So I just like to install it right off the root on my own personal machines. Uh, although maybe there's a tools directory or something like that if you're working on a production server or something like that. But if you have rights to the C drive, install it. Notice the name JDK-17. Uh, you don't want this to get confused with Java 7, which was actually JDK 1.7. So underscore JDK-17 looks good to me. I'm gonna click OK. Click the next button. Maybe even come over here and look at that JDK 17 right there off the root of the C drive. Now it says, hey, there's some next step tutorials that are available to you. Are you interested in them? I am not, but I'll click next steps anyways. And yeah, it's just gonna send me over to the Oracle documentation site. But I know all about Java, so I don't need to go there and look at the documentation. And since I know about Java, I also know that, well, if you've installed Java, you got to uh, configure the Java home directory, the Java home environment variable. So you can see right here, it's been installed to underscore JDK 17. I'm going to copy that folder. Sometimes people aren't sure if Java Home should be set to the bin directory or just to the root of the JDK 17 install. It should be right to the root of the install. And on Windows, to configure those environment variables, you can just type in system into your search window. I believe it's this system applet right there that I want to configure. I click over on advanced system settings a systems property window will appear allowing me to configure environment variables and I'm going to add a well I'm going to add a systems variable call it java underscore home and point it right to jdk 17 click ok now java home has been configured uh, but you know what the other thing you might want to do is actually edit the path as well so it's a good idea to add the bin directory to the path. If the bin directory is part of the path, then anywhere that you open up a command prompt or a bash shell or something like that, you'll be able to access the various commands that are in the JDK bin directory. And there's some delicious ones in there. You can actually see there's things like the jar signer, the jar exe, the actual Java runtime environment, the Java compiler, Java doc generator, even Java flight recorder over here. So having that on the path isn't such a bad idea. Okay, now I've set the path, I've set Java home. Let's now see if we can open up a DOS prompt or a command prompt. And can we echo? Java home.
there we go, JDK 1.7. And if I type in Java dash version, there's only a single dash there. Look, Java version 17 is now available to me. So I think all of that is pretty cool. Certainly I've configured Java Home and I know that the bin directories on the class path because if it wasn't that little java call wouldn't work now let's see if i can actually create a little hello world program so i'm going to create a a new folder and called it com and under that folder i'll create a, a new folder called mcnz and then in this folder i'm going to create a new text document called hello world dot java and it's not really going to be a text document it's going to be a dot a java file i'll open that up with good old notepad plus plus and maybe even write some java code so it's the package com.mcnz because it's in the subfolder com mcnz and let's see what else should i do here public class hello world and then put the public static void main string args in there and do system.out.helloworld close that and close that just keeping in mind everything's case sensitive so hello world there has to match the name of the file and as well everything has to end with a semicolon your colons have to match but i'm going to click Control s to save that and then I guess I can come back to my command file. I'm gonna to have to move into that JDK7 directory there. So let's do a little navigating around. And if I do java c com.mc com slash mcnz slash hello world dot java. Notice that a hello world dot class file gets created. So we've compiled that into Java bytecode. And if I run it by using the Java command, well, it spits out hello world to me. And there you go. That's how easy it is to install the Oracle JDK, specifically JDK 17, the long-term support release. So that gets Java install, that's how you configure Java Home on a Windows machine. And that's also how you add the bin directory to the path of your Windows installation. So you can take advantage of things like the Java compiler, the Java runtime command, and all of the other goodies that are packaged inside of that Java bin directory.